Oh, 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 oh. One of the most incredible moments I have ever experienced. Boneworks, Beat Saber, Half-Life Alex. Very immersive, full body VR experiences. That won't be for everyone with its $500 price tag. Oh, that's so weird. Oh. This right here, this is game changing. <laughs> I made my very own VR haptic vests from scratch that uses the VRChat OSC and Avatar Dynamics colliders to power vibration motors based on where you're touched on your avatar. The modern day haptic solutions you can buy for VR today cost quite the pretty penny. And without one, someone like me who doesn't have phantom sense can miss out on a lot of extra stimulus and immersion. I think haptics are the next big step in VR, but at $500, a haptic vest is just a bit too expensive for me right now. So I decided to dedicate months of my own time to designing, 3D printing, and making my very own haptic vest for less than 100, instead of using that time to just work and save up for one. Logical, of course. Though, I will say, I started this project with a very, very different idea than what I actually ended up with. So let's start this project from the very beginning and I hope you enjoy my slow descent into madness. You may have heard of this concept before because someone by the name of Pointlessly Useful really caught the eye of the VR news community a couple of months ago with their own spare parts DIY haptic vest. It used eight rumble motors recycled from broken PS2 controllers, controlled by a Raspberry Pi Zero W and a couple of custom designed motor drivers. Although simple, the fact that this was demonstrated to work in games that had the haptic support blew many minds, mine included. The concept and execution were so simple and functional, I started to think to myself, could I do this, but better? And with that, a seed was planted. Pointlessly Useful's project was an amazing demonstration of what could be possible, and his use of recycled and spare parts is a testament to that. But what if I were to take it a step or two further? What if I were to quadruple the motor count, give it a huge battery, and make it modular so I could expand it as much as I like? And so, I set off to do exactly that. I started work around the same time I saw the vest on others' YouTube channels, so about five or so months ago. I messed about with some of the electronics I was planning on using, almost blowing up my PC in the process. Now, ooh, that's bad. And hacked together a mess of bag straps and buckles as a crude prototype for the base of my vest. Whilst I was majorly successful in making my coin buzzers count to four and making the most integral parts of my vest look as questionable as possible, not everything was sunshine and rainbows to be exact. Of the 32 motors I planned to use for the vest, I had five, one of which was DOA, and of the four that did function, it took me a lot longer than I would like to admit to get them working because at that point I had never seen a line of Python before in my entire life. Oh, and the webbing prototype I made also had some issues. Aside from making my forward profile look like the classic fat Spider-Man logo, it literally didn't have enough room inside of it for my lungs to expand properly if I tightened it. Is anyone out there? And that was because it was made of solid straps and nothing else. So yeah, not too great of a start. And with a certain other project becoming rather explosive in nature, my attention drifted away from the vest project for a while and allowed my mind to clear a bit while I tended to those other matters. February comes around and all the stuff I had planned was all done and dusted. I came back to the vest project with a clearer mind and a much sharper set of ideas than ever. The first thing I did was completely redo the webbing because it was extremely overcomplicated and just unusable in the first place. I realized I could literally just Google my shirt size and get exact measurements to be able to tailor a much simpler design to proportions that would actually fit me. I used those measurements to make a front and rear grid for the motors that connected together over my shoulders with some convenient, but useless, adjustable straps. They literally kept on giving up and losing to gravity, which is the complete opposite of what they're supposed to do, but I digress. I then used every single cell in my brain to come up with a magnificent idea of using elastic around the sides of the vest so I could give my diaphragm some room to expand, whilst also keeping tension on the front and back to push the motors against my torso like I originally intended. The marvels of modern technology can really be magical sometimes. Now with the webbing in a usable state, I got to printing out the battery pack holder and a few of the other motor assemblies, then attached them to the vest to see how comfortable it was with them on. I didn't expect it to be great, but it was actually much better than I anticipated, and the webbing itself turned out to be pretty much perfect. So I plowed on with my head held high and began putting together the electronics. My goal for this project was to elevate Pointlessly Useful's idea to a similar level to a higher end haptic solution like an X40 from B Haptics. So like Pointlessly Useful, I chose to go with a Raspberry Pi Zero W as the brains for the vest because I plan to just modify and use his script to keep things simple. And I used two 16 channel PCA86 9685 uh, two 16 channel PWM controllers to control my mass of 32 motors, one for each side of the vest. 
That would bring me close enough to the X40's total motor count of 40 without having to go too crazy with additional boards. I arranged these all around the battery unit like so, and kept all of the headers so I could hot swap the wires without a soldering iron while developing it. And so, the first iteration of the brains pack as I like to call it, was born. The next thing to do was start wiring it up, though I did have a few interesting restrictions I had to work around. What I've got to do now is figure out how to power all of these simultaneously through one USB port because this battery bank here has a very very funny quirk where it actually shuts off the ports if there's not enough power being drawn from them and so the Raspberry Pi will draw enough power but one of these PWM controllers being powered by its single header on the side of the board there is not actually enough to keep this thing switched on just like that. So, at least for the power, I had to do something quite interesting as you can see. What I had done here was wired up all the boards in series along the connection to the battery. It starts off here at the battery's USB port, going along to each power terminal on the PWM boards one after another, then it just goes from them to the 5 volt and ground pins on the Raspberry's GPIO header, which in theory should allow me to power it without having to use the micro B port on it like you usually would. Though I wasn't exactly confident in my assessment of that, and thought there might be a tiny, slightly large possibility of magic blue smoke. But with my brave ignorance and stubbornness not to just Google if this was okay to do, I went ahead and tried to power it up anyway. I do believe this is going to go up in smoke, uh, so I might as well have a camera trained on it for funsies. Just going to look for LED power on the Pi. I have no f***ing clue what I just did. That was an understatement, and also foreshadowing, but we'll get to that. I had just tried to power the Raspi along its 5 volt GPIO pins, which I wasn't sure was okay to do outside of vaguely recalling some forum posts I had skimmed over literal days ago. And as soon as I gave the line some power, I see zero activity from the Pi? That's not good. Turns out I hadn't actually broken anything, and powering the Pi like this would be totally fine so long as I didn't try to power it from the micro B port at the same time. Yeah, where have I seen that before? Just by some freak chance or some forgetful occurrence, the micro SD card I was using was absolutely cooked. Literally, it was like it was undergoing some internal fusion reaction every time I gave it power. Oh, fucking hell, that SD card's boiling! Also, and I'm really upset about this, it actually killed one of my USB SD card readers. Unbelievable. Rest now, my sweet prince. You will be missed. With a fresh SD card and a new install of Raspbian, I got the Pi and the PWM controllers running straight away, and even under the brain specs own power. I am so, so happy with that activity on a fully standalone unit. With that success under my belt, I assembled the rest of the motor assemblies, slapped them onto the webbing, then to do a proper test fit with the majority of the hardware in place, I superglued the useless shoulder straps because I couldn't figure out how to get them to work, and as I put it on, I noticed quite an interesting consequence of my design decision to build my own base for the best, rather than buying a pre-made one and modifying it. If you look at my torso and I bend down, the motors stay exactly in place where they're contacting my skin, no matter how I can talk my body. I don't think the haptics vests have this degree of flexibility built into them, and that is something I'm quite happy with. This, combined with the much more breathable and customizable aspect of assembling my own vest base, really made the idea start to pay off. A pre-made vest that I could modify would be more available for others, but would get stuffy after long play sessions and would require me to buy a whole new one if I royally screwed up or changed my mind on something. Though it is an equally valid option. Either way, with my own back successfully pat, I started on the wiring, beginning with the power and I2C connections to the PWM controllers. Please ignore the battle scarring, I swear I can cut cables to length sometimes, and then I moved on to wiring up what motors I had to the PWM controllers. Key words there being motors I had. Yeah. This is where it starts to get a bit rocky. Back when I started buying the components for this project, I didn't actually get enough motors, so the bottom eight of the rear ones were absent, and were taking the express scenic route from China. Not only that, but I physically couldn't wire up the motors further away than the immediate block of eight around the PWM controllers, because the proper gauge wire I ordered was also missing an action from the post for some reason. This was very annoying, and after waiting a few days to no avail, I just gave up and decided to wire up the motors with the wire I had lying around, which was way too high of a gauge. Your local TSA agent hates me. <laughs> Look at this. The wire that I was having to use was literally three times thicker than what I was planning on using, but for now it was working well enough as a temporary solution. However, the very next day, the doorbell rang. Motors. The final set of motors has actually arrived now, and I paid a pretty penny for them. The ones I ordered on AliExpress basically had a 72 day guarantee they would arrive by then and I wasn't going to chance having to wait that long. So I went on the Pi Hut and just bought a similar kind of haptic motor to what I have in all of the other modules here and just rolled with it. 
The difference in them is literally just this. This here is a Grove haptic motor module, and that's kind of just built for their ecosystem. But it does work in the exact same way as this, because they're both PWM boards. And so if I send a PWM signal to the right pins on the Grove board, it will act exactly the same as the old one. The only difference is that I'm going to have to desolder this little header here because it sticks out quite a little bit and the pins are facing the wrong way. So after I make the modifications to make this fit the same general um, form of these, I will attach them to the final eight motor points that are left here and then wire them up to the PWM controller. And so I got right to it. I clipped the boards to shape, desoldered the bulbous header off of the board, glued the three pin header to the casing, then soldered the board into it. Usually you'd buy all of the motors ahead of time, but because I'm an idiot and was basically doing the R&D for this on the fly, I didn't actually have them. So I don't expect everyone to have to make this mod. And so I did that to the final seven motors and used the new set of screws I also had to wait for to attach them all to the vest. So with everything in place, all I had to do was wire up the final set of motors. And here we are. The first iteration of the haptic vest hardware was complete. I did actually try to record my thoughts on it as soon as I completed and tried it on, but most of what I ended up with was incoherent rambling, partly driven by my natural inability to talk without a script, but mostly due to my excitement and exhaustion as I finally got it done. I'll just summarize. The first thing I noticed was how heavy it had gotten. This has gained quite the few pounds since I put it on last. This has gotten quite heavy. The addition of the oversized wiring running all over the vest added an excessive amount of copper that made quite the noticeable difference to the weight and did stiffen it up quite a bit. Though surprisingly, the mobility and flexibility of the vest wasn't really compromised despite the extra bulk. I was really happy with that because that meant I could conduct my in-game testing without much issue or restraint, which was something I worried about when making the compromise on the wiring. And the comfort, although not exactly cozy, was indeed wearable, especially for such an early prototype. I already had plenty of ideas on how to slim down the wiring and improve the wearability of it for the next version. But just for now, this was fantastic. I had a fully assembled, fully custom 32 motor haptic vest, and all it needed now was for me to bring it to life. But that obviously wasn't going to be as easy as that now, was it? On to only the most fun bit the software. I'm coding everything in Python because that's what Pointless the Useful script was written in, and it's also the Raspberry's native programming language. I was planning on tapping into bHaptics compatible games using a customized version of Pointless the Useful script because bHaptics has the most widespread and feature-rich haptics integration into VR games. And you may think, what's so difficult about that thing? Just use it to get the data, then send the data to the vest. Well, let me tell you. The way games usually communicate haptic data to bHaptics devices is by sending the data through a local WebSocket connection to the bHaptics software, and then that acts as an interface to any of their devices you have connected to it over Bluetooth. The way Pointless the Useful script was supposed to work was to be able to replace that bHaptics software, intercept the data coming from the games, then interpret those raw values, and send them off to the custom vest over Wi-Fi. A simple but genius way of doing things. But, well to say it doesn't work would be too harsh. But for my use case at least, it does not f work. <laughs> Pointlessly useful's video demonstrating his haptic vest led me to believe that that was all there was to it. But of course, that was not the case. The short of it is that there are three different communication standards that the bHaptic software uses to receive data from games. Dot point, paths, and files. Only one of which can be read by Pointlessly useful script. Dot point is basically a raw feed of the values for each motor, which is the simplest and is what Pointless the Useful uses. Paths sends the coordinates of a contact on the vest for the bHaptic software to figure out and generate haptics for. And files are basically proprietary haptics animations that can be made specific for each game, which makes it practically impossible to interpret without the use of the actual bHaptic software. And no oh joy of joys, guess which one of those is by far and away the most favoured by the industry. Literally the only games I know that work with Pointless the Useful script uh, the Thrill of the Fight, which is the game it was demoed working with, and also probably the B Haptics mod for VRChat. Not a great showing when I was planning on making it compatible with all Haptics supported games. Incredibly, incredibly infuriating, but there is no real blame here. No promises were really made or broken, and the script does work. It's not with everything. So, I was going to have to find another way of grabbing B Haptics data so that it could work with all games, no matter the format. Luckily, though, as it turns out, Pointless and Useful isn't the only one who's posted a video on a DIY haptic vest, and this one may hold the key to the universal compatibility I so desire. 
As is apparent in this video by SN2K, it's actually possible to use the BeHaptics player instead of replacing it, just by connecting to it in a similar way that a game does. And that's just perfect, because if I can get haptic data out of the BeHaptics player, that means it's already been interpreted for me. All I would have to do then is just pipe that data through to my vest over Wi-Fi, and it's as good as done really. Full BeHaptics compatibility over every single game and mod that supports it. Well, that is until that doesn't work as well, but you know, what, are the, what are the chances of that? Basically nothing, right? Yeah, this one was even worse. I could just about figure out vaguely what to do from the shaky footage of the screen in the video, but not a single shred of source code for this holiday project seems to exist. Every time I tried to connect to the BeHaptix player, the data would start to flow out and everything was fully readable, but after a long enough silence in the data stream, it would seem to put the thread to sleep, and it would never wake up. I tried everything from keep alive pings to setting timeouts to be practically non-existent. It just seemed that there was a condition built into the player that wasn't being met. And yet again, here we are at another roadblock, most likely due to my own inexperience with literally everything I was taking on. At this point, VRChat was going to be the only game I was going to be able to use the vest in because it was the only game that I played that used dot point. And that's if I stuck with pointlessly useful script. But even then, it would require the use of a mod. And the history of modding in VRChat does skirt the line of its TOS. So me wanting this to be as open and as frictionless of a project as possible made that a no-go as well. Especially since there is a much more native solution to haptics in VRChat, that being OSC coupled with the Avatar Dynamics Beta. I was reserving this for after getting the BeHaptic support working, but since it's fallen through, at least for this version of the vest, that is what I'm left with. And to be honest, I'm probably going to be using it in VRChat way more than any of the games anyways, so this is a happy compromise, at least for now. I just want to get this vest working right now, so I can figure out the BeHaptics issue at a later date. It's just a matter of whether this attempt will go up in smoke too. Well, time to find out I guess. Oh god, where the hell do I start? <laughs> Okay, so I'm trying to use a mix of regular and beta features here, so the OSC system and some of the colliders from the Avatar Dynamics beta, and I swear to god the implementation is like haunted or something. I set up the Avatar Dynamics colliders for the motors on the vest, and went to test if I could read their values in my Python script. Other than me managing to move my POV to my left nipple, somehow, the connection went well. But the VRChat OSC would never send any of the collider values through the connection, only the default animation parameters attached directly to the avatar. Basically, to read or write a parameter within OSC, the name of the parameter has to be defined inside of the avatar's corresponding OSC JSON, which is basically just a list of what parameters the OSC server should look for in the avatar. By default, some of the base animation parameters are added to the OSC JSON as an example of how to use it. But the thing is, even if I did define the colliders as parameters, none of the values would actually come through, but the base ones still would. This baffled me as I could literally get these colliders to manipulate animations on my avatar and the parameters would work just fine when I looked at them in the VRChat debug menu, but it wasn't until I somehow managed to just resave the JSON while the avatar was still loaded that the best parameters just decided to start flooding the OSC connection as they should have been doing in the first place. At that point, I immediately realized how stupid the actual issue was. As the avatar loads in, the avatar dynamics colliders, and by proxy the parameters attached to them, seem to load after everything else, including the avatar OSC. So, as the avatar loads into the game, the OSC server checks it for the parameters listed in the JSON, and then parses them so it can send them over the connection. But only after this, the avatar dynamics components would load. So the OSC server would basically have no idea they even existed in the first place, because it had already run its check and missed them. Which is why at this point, only the default parameters would come through the OSC socket. By manually resaving the JSON while the avatar is loaded, it forces the OSC server to recheck the avatar just in case changes were made to the JSON. And because everything on the avatar is loaded now, the OSC server actually picks up the collider parameters and sends them out properly to the script. It's so stupid and so annoying, but I am using beta features so I can hardly complain. I just find it really, really funny that I literally had to write an entire chunk of code that essentially just hits Control S for me every time it detects my haptic avatar loading into the game. <laughs> but hey, it works, and I'm not about to complain about a workaround. I love me some of those. Though, I can't wait until the Avatar Dynamics have a full release, and I don't have to get into such stupid stuff to get it to work. Well, guess what, lazy bones? You mother genius, uh, you're so lazy that you managed to literally wait on this video and take so long making it that Avatar Dynamics actually got released and now the video is even more relevant than it was when you started making it. You f oh my, I absolutely love how much I hate myself right now. It's f hilarious. And yes, that does mean that this issue was fixed and my fix is completely irrelevant now. Back to probably some more outdated garb. <laughs> But I digress, it was about time that I tried to make use of the data that was actually coming through now. 
It's time to get down to the meat and potatoes of it. I programmed the PC client to collect all of the incoming values and put them into a giant array of 32 so it was easily readable and simple to send to the vest of Wi-Fi. And aside from some arbitrary head scratching while writing it, there wasn't much more to the PC side of things. For now, time to get back to the vest, but this time for the software. The first thing I had to do was just number the motors based on which PWM channel on the controllers they were hooked up to. I did this by just running each motor in sequence for two seconds and then just jotting down its number on the case of it. And I did this so I could just more easily address the motors in the code and then send the values to the correct motors. That worked out just fine, but at this point I failed to mention that in my unending genius, I still didn't have the patience to just test each of the motors to see if they work properly before assembling the vest. So as I ran the test script, I did notice that some of the motors felt incredibly in and some outright just didn't work at all. I sorely needed to learn from the glaringly obvious QA issues these motors had, especially considering the first batch had a 20% failure rate. I needed replacements, and if you remember, these motors were no longer really available to me in any timely manner. That was not good. But just this once, it seems as if I was in luck. The absentee motors that I ordered from AliExpress suddenly showed up. Seems like Schrodinger's postman was finally observed and actually came into existence right outside my doorstep. And the timing, honestly, could not have been more perfect. I got to replacing all of those dodgy motors, tidied up some of the wires, and finished off marking the motors to their PWM channels. All that was left to do now was grab the haptic data from the PC client and send those values to the motors they belong to on the vest. Simple enough, right? <sighs> yeah, about that. The Raspi is being overwhelmed by the sheer amount of packets being sent by the PC client. While testing, I just barely brushed some of the colliders in game while the vest was on the table, and it kept vibrating for three literal minutes until it was done. Yeah, I was dumb and was generating up to 32 times more messages than I was supposed to, and the vest was trying to churn through every single one of them in order regardless of how long ago it was sent. I had somehow managed to code the PC client to send an entire new message every single time an individual collider was updated. The point of having all 32 collider values get sent in a single message was to have all of those active in that moment get sent at the same time. Yet somehow I had managed to get that backwards like a Neanderthal who puts his socks on before his trousers. So to stop the message overload, I figured out how to make a short asynchronous loop to buffer the messages and send them all at once in a 32 long message like I had originally intended. I wasted a whole day on this because I managed to speed read over the single part of documentation that mentioned exactly how to avoid this. I'm a genius of thorough practice and procedure, what can I say? Anyway, with this buffer functionality, I could tune the data rate to something reasonable while still keeping the best response. And after doing all that, at long last, the final few things to check off the list were done. My DIY haptic vest was fully operational. It's finally time to put this thing on and try it out in VRChat. It has been a long, long time coming. It's been a very, very difficult task, but nonetheless, I've overcome most of the obstacles that have been thrown in my way, and I am here with a working, supposedly, haptic vest. God, I'm nervous now. <laughs> Enough dilly dallying. Let's get this show on the road. Yeah, okay, this is the final stretch. This here is extremely, extremely exciting. This is a combination of a good month or so's work, trials and tribulations, a bunch of sacrifices have been made, but here we are today with a functioning vest inside the archer. That was the bare minimum for me. And well, without further ado, I'm gonna switch to the OSC avatar now. Well, there we go. Hopefully, everything is working. I should be able to. What was it? Oh, whoa. <laughs> this is this is working. <laughs> it's goddamn working. That's such a weird feeling. <laughs> oh, that feels so weird though. Oh, it's so awesome. It was a gamble that this was even going to work in the first place. But now that it has, so many possibilities have opened up. This right here, this is game changing. <laughs> Oh, the hand tracking's kicked in. <laughs> that scared me. <laughs> That's really funny. These motors turn on. They turn on. These motors turn on. They turn on. <laughs> I hope this is a feeling that I get to feel a lot more often. And this isn't a feeling I'm going to let go of so easily either. 
This is just the beginning of this project. I will leave all of the CAD and code you'll need in the description below for this particular iteration of the vest, but I will be making so many improvements to this design and even taking it beyond some janky haptic vest project. The first order of business for this next version is B haptic support, because I think I've got that down now and a much more simplified design regarding 3D printed cases and wiring, so it's easier for you to assemble yourself and wear. I plan on making this something that anyone should be able to take on, so eventually, maybe I'll make a full tutorial once it's reached a material enough state too. But for now, before I leave you with me showing the vest to the general VRChat populace, I just want to thank those of you who've been waiting for this to come out for the past little while now. A lot of developments have been going on behind the scenes, and I'll be bringing those to you guys soon as well. I'm really excited for them. And now the ball is back rolling, hopefully those should be moving along now too. So subscribe and stay tuned for that. My name's Kai, and I'll just leave you with this. Thanks for watching. Jank, look at this thing. Oh my god, I look like I need to be diffused. Like, <laughs> I can't see. Oh, eyes, that's but... so weird. <laughs> what the? F <laughs> I mean, it's like low effort. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I get the point. I get the point. That, that's so much weirder. When I do this, it doesn't tickle. Not a bit. When you do it, it's just like, oh, that's something there. Something's there. <laughs> I feel it. Oh, when I'm in the menu, man, dude. Dude, that is so hype! That works! I just have one today, thank you! What? You have Hello? a bunch of what? balls. Oh! Yo, I know what that? he's got! Does he have a oh, haptic please, suit? Please. Is that what that is? Oh, oh, oh. Haptic vest? Oh! Oh! <laughs> so you can feel all of this? Every time one of these lights up, I feel it. You're gonna hate me for this, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. You can feel that? You can feel that? Yes, I can. Oh, ah. Okay, you're getting the fucking... You're getting, you're getting the spicy motors now. Jesus. Ah. Oh, this I is so cool, bro. Make this avatar. I can, I can feel that. Oh, ah. Find his nipples. No. I've been motorboated. Oh, no. Actual motors as well. Haha. Yeah. Ah, okay. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what does it feel like I when I walk through you? I'm very, very, very shaky. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. This is like some fucking jousting tournament or something. <laughs> Boxing. He was like kicking us and shit, bro. Oh, fucking you. You stay. You stay there. <laughs> oh, you know what I should do? Oh, holy shit. I'm being harassed. I'm being beaten the shit out of. You are now in a science experiment. You are now a guinea pig. Human fidget toy. Human fidget toy. Fucking every time. Every time I join with these lobbies, I'm like a magnet. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> I just become a punching bag as soon as anyone sees that we've got a haptic vest on. Oh, hey, look, a new person. Hey, come touch this guy. Yo, I saw this person has a haptic suit. It always happens. Somebody in the lobby takes responsibility and decides to, like, go hoarding new people, like, come and touch this one. <laughs> touch him, he has haptic. Touch him, you can touch feel him. it. Touch him, bro. Can I touch your belly button? Go ahead. Woo! Wait, can you actually feel that? <laughs> oh my god! Oh, this is so sick. I want to get one of these. Get the lint out of the way. Ah. Like, oh. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> this is very interesting. I've been on VR chat for over nine months, but I've never mm. seen anything like this before. Software is very sketchy. Right there. You drain my batteries, you know. <laughs> bonk, bonk. Bonk, 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 bonk. Oh god, an hour and a half. An hour and a half took 3%. 3% of the battery was fast. I feel, I feel like if someone wants to do this long enough, you'll need to take a piss in the, in the moment. <laughs> I ain't fisting me. <laughs> Question though, how sturdy is this vest? Like, could, can you? <laughs> I can feel that, yeah. <laughs> oh god. I've actually we posted can, that video. You can also feel hugs now. Right, yeah, yeah. Oh god. It sounds so f***ing wrong. Hey, I just wasn't speaking because I got super nervous. <laughs> Hi. Hello. You're getting nervous around a block with his balls on, I was like... Shut up, you f***ing twat. <laughs> That's so f***ing loud. I know, his bass boosted his f***ing is not. Oh god. <laughs> I was just ran into my wall through this. Because it, it has to right be with you. <laughs> Hi there. You did, but I can't remember what it was. I, th I feel I'm gonna make some like terrifying creations in the next couple of weeks. You are a terrifying creation, Kai. You have been since the day I met you. Hey, 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 hey. Oh no, it's falling down. There is no.
better feeling. There is no better feeling. Actually so much fun. <laughs>